people are questioning whether Rama existed or not, okay? This is a, just a question of uh, poor memory. When the entire nation has been talking about it for thousands of years, now the problem is your trust in printed word, people are questioning whether Rama existed or not, okay? This is a, just a question of uh, poor memory. When the entire nation has been talking about it for thousands of years, now the problem is… See, uh, we are… after all Indians, we… Uh, we invented zero. We have certain freedom in using number of zeros. <laughs> We're taking liberty with that. Don't… Uh, see, see whether… whether six, seven thousand years ago, whether hundred thousand men fought or uh, ten thousand men fought, doesn't make a difference. The way the story is said in this country is not for its facts, but for its truth. You're trying to bring out a certain truth. The fact of it, whether hundred thousand men fought, ten thousand men fought, what does it matter? You don't have to manage that war today. Now, literature is different, history is different <laughs> Literature… literature can be fiction. History is written in a dialectical way so that it's always relevant for you. I'm saying six thousand years ago, whether a man existed or not, what's my problem? Unless he has something to contribute to my life today, isn't it? A six thousand year old drama, if it got a little mixed up, it is not your problem. The problem is just this, is there something for us to get from that? Sure. That's all the thing is. Now, why we are worshipping Rama in this country is, he's not a super success. He is a serial disaster, if you look at it. <laughs> yes, even today is having real estate issues, that's why you brought this up <laughs> uh, no. But uh, it is not today alone, uh, it's not today alone, right from the beginning of his life, he is in trouble and trouble and trouble and trouble. See, he is a rightfully a king. He is coronated at the age of seventeen or eighteen. He ma marries a, a princess and within a one or two years, he's sent to the forest. They didn't go to the jungle for picnic. As uh, some of the television serials are showing Rama Sita doing all that. <laughs> no, it is a… it is a like, you know, throwing him out of the kingdom from his power and everything. That itself would have shattered a man, but he settled down there. Now uh, these Sri Lankan people come and kidnap his wife and go away. <laughs> after all, after all he is a king. If uh, somebody steals his wife and takes her away some three thousand kilometers down south, there's no GPS to even find out where is Sri Lanka, <laughs> right? At a time like that, being a king, he could have found a local solution. <laughs> there would be any number of women to marry the men, he's a king. But he goes in search of her, not with a big army, just him and his brother, like ordinary people. If a man has to walk three thousand kilometers down south, not knowing where she is, whether she is alive or dead or what's happened, then she must mean so much to him, yes or no? Yes. Otherwise, why would a man walk so that distance? <laughs> now, he goes there, he forms a Tamil army, don't forget this <laughs> and then uh, there is a fight kills hundreds of people, burns down a beautiful city, gets back his wife, comes and settles down. Before this, I will tell you, he goes for a year of penance in Himalayas. His brother asks, are you crazy? This man stole your wife and now you're doing penance for his death. He said he had ten basic qualities, Ravana. Killing those nine, which were horrendous qualities, I… no penance for me, no repentance for that. But he was also a great devotee and I killed that also. So one year of penance the man goes for. This is not a <laughs> And then he settles down and his wife is pregnant. You must understand for a king, his wife is pregnant means it's not just about a child. It's a progeny for his empire and there are many things involved. No sonogram, so he doesn't know whether it's a girl or a boy or boys or girls or anything. But once again a political situation evolves where he has to send his wife to the forest which… 
Today in our country there are many kinds of things. I'm asking you, do you want a leader for this nation who puts the people of this nation above his own family and his personal love? I'm asking you. Yes. Or do you want a Dhritarashtra, at any cost my son? You want a man who puts the citizens of this uh, country above his family. This is not a, just another woman for him. He went and fought a battle for her, walked three thousand kilometers. This is not just another woman. He is living for her, but still he sends her back to the jungle when she is pregnant, knowing fully well that it could be his future for this kingdom. And he is putting… see, it is not just about a dobi, this is what your mistake… you are taking these things literally. When a dobi said, what it is being said is ordinary people are talking like this. Ordinary people have no trust in the king, that he is… she… he is just brought some woman from somewhere and he has made her our queen, because queen is seen as a mother to the nation. We don't want such a woman as our mother, that's what they are saying. She went and lived with some man somewhere. This is what the people of those times are saying. So if the king says, I don't care what you think, I love my wife and keep her, that would be not a good king, not a good administrator. So he is putting his people above somebody that he loves very, very dearly and she's pregnant. It's not a small thing for him, it means a world. But still, he sends her to the jungle. This should be bowed down to, this is why we bow down to the man. No? Please say it. It's not a small thing for him. Well, then uh, you are against Gautam Buddha, you are against Rama, everybody. But you need to understand this in the right context, that is, if this woman didn't mean anything to her, he wouldn't have traveled down to Sri Lanka, fought a battle and brought her back, isn't it? How can you <laughs> His pride you could have got, he could have got a hundred wives around him if he wished, but he went for this person who means so much to him. You don't know anything else about his life, neither me nor you, all right? So, from what you read, nowhere does it say that he was insecure. Nowhere does it say he went for his pride. Nowhere does it say that… No, no, everywhere it says very clearly. Let me tell you, the reason why he is worshipped today is, though life through disasters after disasters at him, the man never became resentful never became hateful, never became angry. He did not become a recluse either. He went about fulfilling every duty that he has to do. With a personal pain and grief that he is carrying all his life, the man went about doing the best he can do for his praja of the day. If this is being accused of being as pride and this, 